but let me explain where I am because I'm at the Itachi Rail Factory. So obviously making trains is huge business for them here. They have um, around a thousand people who work here and you can see behind me, they looked, I feel like I'm on the like a Lego set or something because everything's so little, but right in the corner over there, there's some of the trains, the Azuma trains that are going to be made for LNER, the East Coast Line. Next to them, you've got Great Western trains, you've got Scott Rail, so lots of different uh, trains being made here. It is, as I say, a big business for them. And Mark, who's head of manufacturing for the UK for the company, can tell us a bit more about what they do. Morning to you. Good morning. So explain what it is you do here. Yeah, so we, we receive a, a painted body shell like the one behind me from our, our, our parent company in Japan and we're going to spend 27 days then making that into a finished vehicle so about about 30 days from now this vehicle behind us will be on the test track yeah. and it will be tested ready to go out this one's for our customer oh. up in Scotland and so there are lots of people inside John is up there give us a wave John John's uh, one of the team this morning who's on shift uh, putting all the bits together inside and it's in terms of what you're doing inside give us an example of some of the jobs people will be doing like John uh, okay so people work inside on the roof and underneath so we have to fit out the whole of the, the inside of the vehicle if you look you look here we have lots to do underneath so we have to fit all of the heavy duty cabling we fit all of the pneumatics underneath but mm. crucially we do a lot of work on on data connections our state-of-the-art trains are, are generally computer controlled so it's all fly-by-wire so there's hundreds of kilometers of cabling that have to be detailed wiring into the into the cab and through the, the length of the train. And how long does it take to make a train? So this vehicle will take 27 days to get to the end of the system. Yeah. This will be three cars, so there's another two cars that have to go with it. We'll form them into a train, then we're going to test it for 30 days to make sure it's fit and safe to go out onto the network. Yeah, fascinating. Mark, thank you very much. I love learning about all this. And we're going to take you inside so you can actually see all the uh, gubbins going on. But let's go and have a chat to Joanna and uh, Lee here as well. Morning to you both. Morning, so, morning. Joanna, uh, University of Durham, you, you, you're working a lot with the businesses in the local region. This is obviously a key manufacturer. What's it like for the rest of the region at the minute? It's looking really positive if you talk to the Institute of Directors, to the Advanced Manufacturing Forum, they will tell you the story of not only the really big manufacturers like this doing extraordinarily well, but also those smaller, disruptive, if you like, supply chain members that feed big manufacturing companies like this with the innovation and the creativity that we're so good at here in the Northeast. And they're all doing really well as well. So talking to Phoenix Steel and talking to Selpac Solutions and the guys who are expanding their factories, taking on more people and really getting ready to support the big manufacturers like this that are so critical to our region is very much the, the temperature, if you like, of yeah. what's happening at the moment. Uh, and Lee, what's the national picture then you work for the EEF and so constantly talking to businesses all over the country? What are they saying? I think that's right. Some of that positivity is definitely reflected at the national level. So we've seen output and orders growth um, sustained. Looks like the second half of the year is going to be reasonably good for UK industry. Um, I mean, there's some real pockets of strength. Um, and the export picture, I think, in particular, has been an important prop for manufacturing growth over the last couple of years. It's really boosting industries like electronics, basic metals, and that's all reflected in, uh, in our survey today. Yeah. And so do you think, um, given all of the uncertainty at the moment, mm -hmm our manufacturers are going to grow, continue to grow? I, and I think that's a huge question and I don't think anyone can be 100% confident um, that that can continue indefinitely given some of the uncertainties and tensions that manufacturers are going to be dealing with, not least Brexit negotiations obviously are hitting a bit of a crescendo at the moment but we've also got this backdrop of trade tensions primarily between the US and China but I don't think we can rule out an escalation of that and that, you know, that is going to weigh on companies' confidence to push ahead with big um, strategic investment plans in the UK. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time, Sven. I know I'll be chatting to you a little bit later on in the programme as well. And I, oh, they're about uh, I'm going to, about 700 workers are about to start their 7 a.m. shift shortly as well. So I'm told there's going to be a throng of people uh, coming through. So I'll take you inside to meet some of them and see the trains as well. So more from me a little bit later. Yes, yeah, so you can see some of them arriving already mm. for work. Um, Steph, thank you very much. I'm just changing where I am so you can see this uh, train carriage here that's just being brought out. So they're going to do uh, a bit of work on it here, but it's really fascinating. So this is a tart sheet rail, uh, their factory here up um, in Newton Aircliffe. Now, it's fascinating how it works. Let me just explain. So these carriages will be brought in the outer shell. They'll be shipped over from Japan. That'll take about two, two months. They'll come into Teesport. And then in this building, they will basically put everything inside the train, everything from your insulation, your cabling, your seats, the 
doors, the windows, the lot. So there's lots of people inside of these trains. Now, you can't see that many of them who are working uh, on it. But, yeah, this is a big business. They employ uh, around 1,400 people here. So it's certainly a busy operation. And the chief operating officer for Hitachi Rail Europe is Ross, who we have here this morning. Morning, Ross. Morning, so tell us a bit about where your business comes from and where, how it's growing. So primarily, it's like Hitachi have invested here £100 million in this facility in Newton Aycliffe. Primarily, our bid pipeline comes from the UK. We are here to service the UK rolling stock market. That's our primary opportunity. HS2 is on the horizon. Nexus, those are the competitive bids that we are looking at currently. So how does it work? Then you will put in a bid to make them. And then is, and then how long does it take? And what sure. happens next? Quite a lengthy timescale, as you can imagine. Obviously, it's the public money. It's here to service the, the UK market for the British public. Uh, so obviously, it's a very lengthy process. We're going to put the bid in 2019 for HS2, and it'll be 2026 before those trains are going to service. So quite a long timescale. So, so how do you make sure you've got everything ready to do that? So again, it's pre preparation and supply base, working on our, our previous experience, our capability. And, you know, Hitachi have got a long heritage, over 100 years of train building experience, obviously famous for the Japanese bullet train. That's what we believe will be our leverage as we go forward. We want to be a British icon as we go forward. So the types of trains here, it's Scott Rail, it's Great Western, it's LNER. But recently, you didn't get the contract for the Transpennine Express. That went to the Italian factory. Why was that? So what we did, that's Hitachi Global Footprint, so manufacturing in Japan, in Italy for Europe and for ourselves here. We're full, as you've just touched on, you know, we're working on a lot of programmes at the moment and the factory's basically full, we're at capacity. Yeah, OK, so you can't make any more at the moment, is that what you're saying, or are you, are you going to expand more, do you think? So we're looking to expand in the future. Obviously, we want to have full scope, full assembly here on the facility at Newton Aycliffe, and that's our aspiration as we go forward yeah. for Hitachi as a business. Because the outer shell, they come from Japan, don't they? Is there a plan to change that and get them made here? Yeah, so body shell manufacturing here would be the next natural step for the Newton Aycliffe facility to incorporate that into the business, and that's our plan. And, and often when I talk to businesses at the moment, they, they're saying uncertainty is, a, is an issue for them. Is that something you're worried about? Brexit's the question, Brexit or Brexit not, that's a challenge. Uh, very difficult from a planning po point of view. For Hitachi, we are being prepared. Obviously, we're demonstrating our capability on our current programmes and primarily we're here to service the UK market, the UK Could rollers. it impact this business if we were to leave? Potentially, yes, but we're part of a global footprint. So the business here in Newton Aycliffe is here primarily to serve the UK market, but also has the footprint into Europe and potentially globally. Ross, thank you very much for your time. And you've created your own phrase there, Brex not, was it? <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Ross. Let's go and have a quick chat to Lee Hopley here as well, who's the Chief Economist at the EEF, which represents manufacturers. I mean, Ross just explained there um, just all about how, it's in, how you know, the uncertainty of Brexit's impacting. Just give us a, the wider picture on what's happening with manufacturing at the moment. I mean, it's great to see all the buzz of activity here today, and that's actually a picture that you would see right across the country in manufacturing. Um, companies are still reasonably upbeat about their their output, their orders prospects, the global economy is pretty supportive still at the moment. Um, but you're right, clearly Brexit is the big potential cloud on the horizon. You know, that's a huge step into the unknown for lots of companies. And I think that is probably weighing on confidence and definitely investment plans across the sector, potentially a worry there for future growth and also productivity, you know, which is kind of a bit of a bit problematic for the industry at the moment. Is there, is there things to be optimistic about? There's always things to be optimistic about. I mean, UK manufacturing is incredibly resilient. Um, we are seeing good growth as companies have been able to tap in lots of opportunities around the world. There's a huge amount of innovation going on, you know, thinking about some of the big challenges that our economy faces, like future transport systems, ageing population. UK manufacturing is going to be a big part of driving those um, solutions and, um, and, and a big part of our economy going forward. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. I'm going to leave you with just a shot of the trains. And again, I'll take you back inside in, uh, to another bit of the train a little bit later on. You can meet some of the people who are working on them. But these guys, you can see, it's just fascinating. You never get to see underneath a train, do you? And uh, there you are. I'll leave you with that shot of the team over here working. More from me a bit later. Thank you very much for that, Steph. We'll be back with you a little bit later on. Good to see a bit of productivity Look there.
Good morning to you. Morning, everyone. Yes, this is the attire I feel most comfortable in, I'll be honest. So I'm inside uh, one of the trains that they're fitting at the moment. So this factory, Itachi Rail, uh, they make around oh, about one train a week at the moment, but that involves a lot of work. So here the guys have been fitting the floor. You've got the insulation, the wiring. They get this shell that comes over from Japan and then they will put all of the bits in and about 70% of what they put inside a train will come from a 40 mile radius. So lots of local supplies involved too. Tom, let me grab you. Tom, tell me a bit about what job you do here. I'm a test technician so here what, at yeah, Itachi. On. And what do you have to do for that? It's a lot to do with testing just before the train leaves the factory, so making sure the weight's distributed evenly. Yeah. And you've just completed your apprenticeship, haven't you? So congratulations. Thank you very much. Just what, come out with time. What, what did you, why did you decide to do this? Because you were working in nightclubs before, weren't you? Yeah, I was. I was working in nightclubs. I just wanted a job with more future prospects yeah. and a solid career. And now you have got that. Good. Well, good luck, Tom. I'll leave you to get back on again. Tom's also just proposed to his girlfriend who said yes. <laughs> hey, good lad. Right, let's go through because I want to take you through to uh, see the next bit of the process. So now you can evidently see it's all the cabling. There's around 4,000 miles worth of cabling inside every train here. So you've got the bits to power the door. You've got the data cables, the lights and everything else like that as well. And I can take you through to where the cab area is. Obviously, there's about 10 kilometers worth of uh, cabling just in the cab bit and there's also Keely there. Keely can I grab you love? Morning. Morning. Now Keely I love this story about you. Tell everyone what you do here. Yeah? I work on cubicle so I wire all the um, CCTVs, HVACs which is your aircon conditioning yeah. units and everything. And before that you were a hairdresser and a beautician weren't was, you? Yes. How did you end up here? Um, I had a break raising children, raising grandchildren, and I seen the advertisement. And I thought, why not? Yeah. And here I am. And you, and I'm alright in thinking you couldn't even do a, a three pin. Why you yeah. a three pin plug? And now yeah. you're doing like top no. trains. Yes, I am. Yeah. yeah. And I think the training that they give you and everything's broke down into sections. It's enabled me to be able to do the job I'm doing today. Yeah. And do you know what they call her? They call her fire fingers. Because <laughs> you're literally the fastest person who can do this, aren't you? Maybe, yes. Yeah. 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 Oh. Nimble fingers. Yeah. Don't be modest about it, Kayleigh. I'm well impressed. I'll leave to get back on. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. So interesting talking to everyone. Imagine that though, not ever, you know, not being able to wire a plug and now you're putting all this kit together. Clearly a very clever woman. Right, come on, let's go and meet a couple of other people we've got here. They're having a good nose, these two. We've got Joanna, who's from uh, the University of Durham Business School with Lee Hopley as well he's chief economist at the EF representing manufacturers Joanna how important is a business like this for the region oh it's absolutely massive I mean the Northeast has got a, a tradition a heritage of strong manufacturing environments but places like Hitachi and places like Nissan are absolutely critical and and one of the things that's really important that the North East brings to this particular picture is the ability to provide a really complex supply chain with innovative businesses that can feed into these great big manufacturing companies and keep them right at the top of their game. What are their challenges, would you say? Complex supply chains and those, those very complex operations that are required to feed a big beast like Hitachi really need certainty. You can't plan very far ahead when you don't know what's going to be happening this time next year. So whilst trying to avoid the B word, certainty is a really important thing for this particular big industry and the smaller industries that support it. Uh, and Lee, and that, that's not just a northeast issue, is it? That's across the UK? No, absolutely not. Um, I think we are seeing you know, lots of activity here this morning and that's being replicated in factories right across the UK. So that's really good for now. But, you know, as we've said, that certainty that can really anchor investment plans for lots of big businesses and those critical suppliers in future, you know, is the big unknown for industry at the moment. And I think that's reflected in sort of slightly wavering confidence and not great investment plans just now. There is good stuff happening, though, as well, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, there's lots. I mean, we, we are looking at growth across manufacturing right now. Um, you know, we've come off the back of, you know, two years of positive responses in our surveys that, that, that we carry out. I mean, there does seem to be a sentiment that that can continue, at least in the short term. And the global economy, you know, as long as that holds up, I mean, UK companies have been really good at tapping into opportunities that a growing global economy throws up. Yeah. Ladies, thank you very much for your time this morning. Uh, they have really enjoyed having a look around this factory. I tell you what, it's been so interesting. I'm going to leave you here uh, with this nice view of... There's a bit of gluing over on, on over here, hence the, the big mask. But that's it from me here at the... Have, do you want to give us a... There we are. A little wave there. See you later. Thank you, Steph. And some excellent early...